Hey everybody, it's Tony Farthing with Jacobs & Company LPT Realty and I'm super excited to be sharing with you today all about a different aspect of real estate. You know, it's not just about the realtor helping you buy and sell your home, but there are a lot of other moving parts in the background. And one of those we're going to feature today and that is the lending side of buying a home. So today I have a good friend of mine with me, Danny DeGro with Integrity Home Mortgage. And I'm just going to ask him some questions that I think you as a buyer would be really interested in hearing the answers to. Uh, I met Danny, I don't even know how many years ago, it's been a while, but I initially met him through network marketing through his wife. and. It was a small world though, because when I realized who she was, I realized that I had gone to church with her parents and her mom had actually been one of our daughter's homeschool Spanish teachers. So small world, you just never know who you're gonna meet these days, right? That's right, that's right. Uh, and then when I became a realtor and remembered that Danny was a lender, uh, we met for coffee so I could just kind of get to know him a little bit and what he had to offer. So he is my guy. I just, the name of the company, Integrity Home Mortgage, fits him to a T. Danny is very integritous, um, trustworthy. He's a dad, a husband. He's just amazing. So I'm going to have him just share a little bit about himself so you can kind of get to know who Danny is from a personal perspective. And then I'm going to ask him some questions about lending. So Danny, yeah. just share with everybody a little bit about you. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, well, thanks. Obviously, this is a, is a pleasure. And, and uh, getting to work together for a couple of years has been great. You know, seeing your success translate from what you were doing before to, to real estate. No surprise. I'm sure everybody that knows Tony uh, you know, knows that she's going to be successful at whatever she does. So uh, it's true here for sure. Um, and so, yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been uh, a mortgage lender for um, eight years, just a little over eight years. Uh, but, but what you should know about me, I think, is, is uh, I'm a Christian. I'm a family man. And that has some real tangible uh, you know, uh, downstream of, of, of how I do my business, how I get to uh, work with referral partners, how I get to work with clients, um, you know, just being uh, full of integrity for sure. And, uh, and what it means when I go to work, uh, my, my family's not there to support my business. My business supports my family. So um, I'm very tied to that kind of built in accountability with, uh, with them, with, with you, with any clients we get to work with together. Uh, so, so that's something I really enjoy about it too, is, um, you know, being able to, to have it translate that way. And, and, um, and frankly, being able to, um, you know, bless and provide for my family that way too. It, it's great. So, uh, so yeah, that's um, uh, kind of a little bit about, uh, you know, I guess how uh, I'm, I'm a mechanic by nature. That was kind of my previous life and uh, translates in, in plenty of ways to, uh, to the lending side, believe it or not. Uh, just, I'm just a little bit cleaner now than I was then. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more, you know, tied to the phone than ever was, you know, work on cars, but I, I love it. I love the um, the, the tactics of it, the strategy of it, the troubleshooting, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, maybe that's, uh, we know there's some of that. Yeah. Yeah. It always can be <laughs> right. It's always a mystery. <laughs> so tell them a little bit about your family. Yeah. So, uh, my wife and I, we so will, awesome. yeah, thank you. Uh, we will have been married, uh, for 19 years this October. So, uh, we've known each other since we were 12, uh, met at church then about 12 years old. And it's funny cause our, our oldest son is almost 16 and, um, and they are, you know, they're older than my wife and I were when we met, which is pretty eye-opening for us, but uh, it's fun. So we have eight children, uh, five boys, three girls. Oldest is, uh, like I said, just about 16. And then Callie is uh, about 10, 11 months. And, um, and yeah, so we, we live out in Rixieville and, um, yeah, we have, uh, we have quite a, an active household as you can imagine with all the kids. <laughs> and so a lot of my downtime is, is not spent doing extracurriculars. It's, it's, it's work and then, and then home to, uh, you know, be a husband and be a father and, and all the, you know, the beauty and glory that that contains, uh, and that kind of thing. So, but we've, uh, we've been natives to the area for, for the most part, Brittany's grown up here and, and I, I was born in DC, grew up in Maryland and a little bit of a transplant. I don't like to admit that all the time but, uh, from there. Um, there a lot of transplants around this area yeah. though. <laughs> but yeah, so I've been in, in, uh, in and around Fauquier, Culpeper County, Prince William, um, pretty much my whole life though. So nice. And your homeschool family as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So my wife, and very active, right? Every time I see things on social media, you're at the river or doing things outside. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of times that's what kind of, you know, 
what you have to do when you have that many kids you can't just sit around right? you have to be doing something <laughs> <laughs> so whether it's sports or or playing in the river or uh, other activities yeah and, and my wife and i homeschool i uh, say my wife and i she does a lion's share of it of course um but uh but obviously i, I get that does take time too to um you know, bring the kids with me to work sometimes and help them school there, especially when they get a little bit older. They need a little bit more uh, of, of dad's personality. And I'm kind of the, a principal and a teacher. So, but uh, it's a blessing though to be able to get to do it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Okay. So let's move on a little bit to the lending side. Uh, there are a number of lenders a home buyer can use. Yeah. They're, they can just get online and fill out an application and use an online lending company. They can go local. I personally prefer local because as a realtor, I love to be able to see you or sit with you or call you and know that you're just down the road and have you at the closing. So I love local. But what are some reasons that somebody should choose Integrity Home Mortgage and you in particular? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So uh, that that is the case, right? There's there's a million people who do what I do, uh, right? And, and everybody has their own their own flavor and all that kind of stuff. So um, I agree. You know, working local is just. Uh, has a myriad of, of benefits. Uh, some there are some actual pretty tangible ways that that plays out in the home buying process. Whether it's you have local appraisers, uh, I've heard horror stories of uh, online lenders or maybe big box lenders where they'll have an appraiser come in from out of state, even because they have a pool of appraisers they choose from, just like we do. They have to cover a bigger geographical area, whereas the the appraisers in particular that I work with are all. all local to our area they know the market well and that really does make a big difference that can derail a whole process Mm so um so that uh accompanied with uh, so a little bit about our company and why uh as you can imagine you know in any kind of sales position you get recruited all the time Uh, i've been with integrity home mortgage uh for seven years i got my start in the business somewhere else and and uh, was on a team and then once i got to decide things for myself uh, i've stayed put and uh, it's not because there hasn't been people reaching out to try to recruit and uh, you know praise God have been been successful so um, but with that said staying with integrity uh, has been very intentional we have uh, over 20 investors we're what you would call a correspondent lender mm-hmm. which means that we we can do we do everything in-house uh, we can also keep in service and offer our own rates do all the stuff that everybody else can but um, but we're we're kind of like the, the high speed low drag. We don't have we're, we're not a massive company where you're just a number. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, we have all the loan programs that you could ever want, uh, and then some. <laughs> and so we have all that. We have our own rates to offer other investors that help keep the rates low too. So uh, we don't broker things by just taking your information and then sending it out for somebody else to handle it. Basically, so uh, we we deal with all that. And then at the end of the process is when uh, it's very typical for mortgages to get sold on the secondary market, which is when those investors come into place into play. Mm-hmm. Um, meaning we'll get you the best deal possible, uh, but you deal with us the whole time. So. Um, and another reason uh, is uh, with again with the local aspect of it. I'm the person they work with A to Z. I like to think it's a benefit. You know, hopefully oh, sure. they, they do Absolutely. too. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but you don't get you don't get passed around. Uh, if I I'm the one who's going to over communicate to them to make sure that they know what's going on. They're they're knowledgeable of the process. There's no question marks on is hey is this actually going to happen? Is this going to go through? Because there can be a lot of fear surrounding uh, you know the home buying process. Sure. I know my first experience was filled with some fear and trepidation, uh, and frankly, I think a good lender would have would have taken it all away. So mm-hmm. that's a big part of the motivation why I choose to do the things that I do to make sure people don't have the same fears that that I think can be very common if you're getting passed around, if you're just a number. Um, so it's that's a big part of it, and, and that's not all of it. But uh, um, yeah, I, I like to think that 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 really helps people have the confidence. Um, plus, we have total control of the whole process. We have in-house you know, processing, underwriting, closing. And, um, and the, the owner of our company used to be a loan originator like me. So he really set things up uh, well for us, in which, nice. which helps our referral partners, helps all, all of our clients. So um, that, yeah, it's a little bit about us and why I think that uh, I've stuck with them and, and they've, they provide great support to me. And, and so it's a, it's a good relationship. So. so good, so good. And just a plug for you too. I know you are a dad of eight and you're a devoted husband, and you're involved in your church and the schooling of your kids, so you're very busy. Sure. And you run a business. Yeah. But you have always been accessible, and I just love that about you. Not and I know that. that you are still putting your family first. 
Yeah. But you still make yourself available. Right. So I appreciate that too. Yeah. Well, that you're, you. you're available or if you can't be at that moment, you still communicate that, you know, I'm driving on the road, I'll get back to you in two hours or whatever it might be. But Putting kids to bed. Or <laughs> yes. Yes. So I love that as well. Uh, so that. what do you like about, like why lending and financing? What do you like about helping people with their finances? I don't work a, a nine to five, right? It's not your typical, uh, which, which is, uh, which is good. And um, it, may, it means you have to, to work harder for it, which means every single referral partner and referral uh, is is that much more valuable. So it's not just, of course, the monetary uh, you know side of that. That you know, if you if you close deals, you get paid and all that. You know, I mean, of course, that's that's my job to provide. But frankly, I, I've had so many uh, previous clients that have become at least casual friends. That that's not every single one of them. Doesn't mean we're all going to be best friends, of course, but. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I see them. We're in the same community together a lot of time. Right. They they move in down the road, and uh, and I want to be able to see them, you know, later on walking down Main Street of Warrenton or something like that, and and it to be uh, you know I don't have to duck and hide. <laughs> <laughs> So I want it to be a good experience. We're like, oh yeah, hey, that's the guy who he, uh, me in my he house. helped me buy my house, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and all that. So I love that part of it where you really get to be uh, personable, get to know people's uh, situations, difficulties, apprehensions, maybe even uh, if they have credit concerns, uh, some shame built around that. Where it's, I'm, I'm not judgmental. I go into it seeing how I can provide a solution. So good. So that's where a little bit of my background comes into play. Uh, where I, I love to be the one to to see how to make it happen, especially if somebody else says we can't do it, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, with in the nature of our business, how underwriters work, which we have plenty of great ones and I've got great relationships with them. This is uh, not not a knock on them, but how they have to do their job is to more or less see, uh, you know, how is this not going to work? In in the way that we come at it, you know, from from my position is how can we make this work? So it's completely opposite, but both are needed. And uh, so with that, I love uh, getting. I love the strategy of it. I love getting to to know people and, and what their what their desires are. Maybe uh, you know how to how to structure things for them with, you know, hey, listen, we have all the money in the world available. How do we make this happen? You know, and and and. That's not most people's situation, but right. well, when you get to know, hey, what's your budget? How much do you have to work with? Mm-hmm. You know, you can do that, but do you want to do that? Uh, and then I get to take all that, you know, mix it up and uh, and find the right loan program for them. That's uh, that's going to save their um, like I would want somebody to do for me. It's going to save their family money. There, this is this is the biggest financial decision right, they're, they're likely make. ever going to make, right? Mm-hmm. So it it takes commitment up front. And not even just through the process, right? Like, hey, we got to closing, great, have a nice life. It's not like that. It's okay. Well, right now, um, you know, interest rates are are a lot of people's biggest concern, rightly so. Yeah. So they need somebody they can trust uh, to help them understand that, to help them understand maybe uh, the strategy of uh, this. Is now a good time to buy, uh, depending on the situation. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm going to walk you through the process and also help you plan for the next year, five years, ten years. Um, hey, maybe this is a good temporary solution where you could go somewhere else and get a you know get a loan maybe that's not the best one for you right and, and I'll be able to kind of give them all the, the hard data on um, why that may or may not be but then ultimately of course let them make their decision and sure. and steer the the ship with all the information I'm giving them I love that and I love that if you did have a buyer come I know you know a lot of first-time buy home buyers don't have the cash or they have limited cash and there's closing costs involved and down payment and all of that and credit and you know your your credit score your debt that you carry the debt to income ratio there's so much involved and some people may find out they're not quite ready to buy and i know that you will work with them Mm -hmm. to help them chip away at their debt kind of set them up and counsel them so to speak so that's just another great aspect of you as well. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I totally agree, right? You can't ever get started too soon, you know, to know whether you're planning on buying three, six, 12, 24 months from now, you don't, what you don't want to happen, of course, is which, which why, you know, as, as a great real estate agent like yourself, you would, of course, say, hey, we're not going to go look at any houses until you understand the numbers. So like, you need to know the payment, you need to know what you can afford, what kind of loan, you know, like before you fall in love with the house, let's find out what you can afford, mm-hmm. right? Uh, any, any real estate agent worth their salt would do that, of course. But, um, so, so not just that, but uh, may, maybe we can even get you in a better situation than you are right now. So you, let's say you do, uh, you know, uh, have a house you want to look at and 
uh, instead of just talking to me on Thursday when you go, want to go look out on Friday, which, hey, that happens, and that's yes. perfectly fine. We can <laughs> we can move quickly and, uh, and close quickly, all that kind of stuff. We definitely have that latitude. Um, but if you want to set yourself self up for uh, you know success in, in every single way, uh, finding that out uh, you know before you want to go look at the house tomorrow or, or that weekend, three, six months in advance, or even just a couple weeks, you know you can know a lot and really get prepared. Or maybe even change some things around so that you can, hey, you're qualified here, but if you did this, X, Y, Z, we could actually get you here, and that would be a lot better for you, you know, so it's it's better to start earlier. Yes. For all the reasons. And I love that our daughter went to you oh. and just said, you know, she, she came to us, can, can I buy a house? Like, that's her goal. She doesn't sure. want to move out and go rent somewhere. She wants to purchase her own home. So I said, talk to Danny, and you ran her through the process, and she qualified for X number of dollars, you know, in a house. But when she looked at the monthly mortgage payment, she really kind of stepped back and was like, okay, I, I personally don't believe I'm ready to commit to something like that. But it gave her, like, she has an idea now. She kind of has a baseline and has a goal, and we'll just be kind of working toward that. But yes, it's never too late to just sit down with a lender. I tell people yeah. that all the time when I first meet with a client. One of your first steps is just to reach out to Danny and find out what what this looks like for you. Yeah. And then we'll kind of know what we're what we're working with. So yeah. yeah, and the confidence that you can carry into going to look at a house that uh, you know, when when you know that your financing one is going to be secure and you already know what it's going to cost you monthly and or out of pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, and then then at that point you just get to focus on loving the house and hey, this fits within the budget. We already know what the numbers are. We love it. Right. And you get to focus on that and it takes some of the stress off and, and probably makes it a little bit more enjoyable, I imagine. So absolutely. Um, Nothing worse than finding a house that you can't afford. <laughs> Who wants to do that? Yeah, right. <laughs> so the market's a little different right now. We have limited inventory and that buyers are a little cautious of interest rates. So what is your advice to buyers right now? Yeah, yeah, great question. And kind of at the forefront of everybody's mind, right? There's plenty of things swirling around. Should you buy? Should you not? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think think the best answer is probably the most boring, unfortunately, which is it really depends on your situation, right? Sure. Uh, What is, are you living rent-free? Are you renting? Is your lease up soon? Is the lease up in six months? Uh, Do you own your current home? Is it a good time to sell? Is your home ready to sell? You know, so there's so many things that you know I would provide on my end some some value and as well as uh, you know a good agent like yourself would provide um, for for somebody dipping their toe in the water uh, you know we want to move right okay do you want to move do you have to move are you having more children it's obviously that's caused me to move a couple times <laughs> run out of a few houses as soon as we moved in um, but you know so then kind of with uh, consideration to you know uh, to the market and interest rates and home values inventory uh, you know, you definitely need somebody who, um, who, who does have a lot of that data coming in. A lot of, uh, we have professionals. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a secondary market expert, right? We have people who, who are in charge of that, uh, you know, in, in interpreting what's, what's, what's the Fed actually saying, you know, because they, they love to say lots of stuff and, and everybody likes to interpret it. So, um, that really does uh, dictate how the market reacts. And, and knowing what numbers are looking for, when those numbers happen before the Fed even has a meeting, we can predict uh, with with pretty good you know, historical accuracy sure. how the markets are going to react, and also what to expect uh, not just in the near term but in the next six twelve months uh, with how the Fed you know so they they do of course dictate a lot with interest rates, but what we can control is. Uh, you know, are you comfortable with, can you afford this payment, right? If, if you're happy with this, you need to be prepared to to stick with this for the long term mm-hmm. and, and to, to just be very honest <clears throat> and, and upfront with people to to have good realistic expectations mm-hmm. so that, hey, you can't you can, uh, help somebody and, and hey, you'll be able to refinance at six months. Don't worry about it. That's not good advice. That it could go the opposite way, right? We don't, mm-hmm. we don't think it is, at least right now, but uh, we can't control that. So you need to be prepared for this. This, uh, you know, depending on the loan type, of course, most that we deal with uh, are not subject to adjustable rates. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, you need to be comfortable here. And also, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of good tools that I have on my end with, um, with market data as far as, you know, the cost of waiting, what it might cost you six months from now, 12 months from now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you could potentially, uh, you know, using some some round numbers, you have an interest rate here, and and here's your home sales price right now. If you were to buy this, uh, for instance, if you were to wait for the interest rate to drop a half percent, and that took 12 months, 
what you would have actually cost yourself maybe uh, in our market, uh, let's say Fauquier County in particular, mm-hmm. um, I think it's uh, between four and five percent uh, increase in value uh, every few months is is um, is not unheard of. It, it's happened, and and certainly throughout the year, it's um, or I'd, I'd say it's probably more accurate in, in that regard. Four to six percent per year annually, um, but obviously three to six months is what well, we see values increase uh, just a short term like that, but. The cost of waiting could potentially cost you so much in equity uh, in your house, so you end up paying more for the house and and saving you know half percent on interest rate. Then your payment ends up being more in the long run. So, mm-hmm. you know, but you got the house you know for um, you got the house with a lower interest rate, but but you paid more for it. So after the process, right? So if you you buy a home right now, mm-hmm. go to closing, mm-hmm. you can change the interest rate afterwards. You cannot change the sales price, right? So uh, refinancing more than likely is is you know the future for most buyers nowadays. Um, it's just a matter of, of timing, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's opinion, of course, and not, not fact, but um, I think that we're seeing that bear out a little bit in, in the past you know, three to six months. Interest rates have sure. gone down slowly, as opposed to what they initially predicted, which was four or five cuts this year. The Fed's walked that back, and maybe one, maybe two. Uh, so I, I think uh, that, that's how I would advise somebody is, let's look at the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the cost of waiting, mm-hmm. because that's, that's probably one of the biggest factors right now. That's really, really good advice. And something I always share with my buyers, and you probably, you know, you think this too, you give them your expert opinion based on their situation. I do the same when we're looking at homes. But ultimately I tell them, you're the buyer, you're the one purchasing this house, and you have to sleep at night. If moving forward with this, you can lay your head on your pillow at night and sleep peacefully, you're probably in a good situation. If there's any hesitation, let's talk more about that. Right. Yeah. So I brought up just a minute ago, low inventory. Mm -hmm. So because we're in a market where we're seeing low inventory of homes for our buyers, we're seeing a little bit more of an uptick in buyers going and working with builders and having new homes built because they can't find in the existing market a home that, that they're happy with. So oftentimes when you work with a builder as a buyer, they entice you to use their lender by throwing in $15,000 in closing costs or we'll finish a rec room in the basement if you use our lender. So we've just had a recent situation where you and I are working with a buyer now where you were actually able to do better for the client than that lender. So kind of how does that play out or, you know, is, do you think it's important for a buyer who may be working with a, a builder to yes, look at what their lender offers, but do you recommend they still kind of bring in a private lender and run things through them if for no other reason just to keep the builder honest or like how to sure. what do you have to say to that yeah yeah that's a great question and, and certainly mm-hmm. something that always stares us in the face uh, on the lending side because builders have latitude right they're yes. they own the property they, they, they've got the construction company they've got the settlement company they've got the lender all on one side mm-hmm. which which is great when you think about it that way. You know, it's it's kind of all in house. We can move numbers around, make it make sense. However, uh, you're you're kind of missing a third party objective advocate in that, right? Uh, and so, uh, that that's one aspect of it. You know, you want your lender also talking to your in, in cahoots with. And I don't think that's a negative necessarily, but I mean they're they're part of the same company. They're all you know under the same umbrella and right. um, and kind of all sharing the same same pot of money, moving things around. You don't have. Uh, an advocate outside of them. And that's not to say that they're not an advocate. I'm not saying they're all dishonest, anything like that. But uh, but certainly, you know, uh, the value that I can provide is is uh, is that, right? I can say, well, I'd like to take a look at their fees, sure, see how they're structuring things because uh, they don't do it for free, you know? <laughs> nobody nobody does. Right. And uh, so sometimes it, things could, they could look better uh, than, than maybe they, than they actually are. And having somebody come in just to, at the very least, say, uh, "Yeah, actually, what they're offering you is is really good," and, and I, uh, you know, and we you can't, we can't touch that. it. Sure. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. hey, you know, mm-hmm. good on you. You know, I'm, I'm, hey, let me know if there's something I can do to help. Otherwise, sure. they're the better deal. Um, however, sometimes, uh, and it has happened. Uh, this would be the third time this year where uh, the builder's lender, uh, I was able to to match and actually better a little bit uh, their situation, and and you know, some of that's the different loan products that are available. 
uh, or or just being able to be a little bit more creative, think outside of the box. Um, and, and they may not have quite the incentive that I do, just kind of being independent on my own and, and wanting to, you know, to help people. So, uh, but, but as you mentioned also, uh, at the very least, if I could work with somebody to, um, for the builder's lender to realize that they're in competition, maybe I can get close and they, they know they're talking to somebody else, uh, you know, that could incentivize them to, um, to maybe provide as good of a deal as they can. Mm-hmm. Uh, right and not mm-hmm. not hold back uh, again this i'm not accusing but it, it's the nature of the business you know sure. where where that happens there's competition and um and there's margins built in everybody has different margins so uh not to say that all builders are dishonest i don't think that by any means they just they just have different latitude than we do they're set up differently so it's always good to, to keep them honest you know yes. and, and for me as well you know uh to sharpen the pencil and, and see what we can do see how we're competing and also um uh, just frankly speaking, right? If if I were helping somebody, and uh, and I've had so many people that are are very loyal, and they would actually be torn in that situation where they're like, they're these other people are going to save us a little bit more money, more money, but we really want to work with you, and and they're you know it's like a breakup, <laughs> you know. Where it, <laughs> and so then I get to be like, hey, uh... listen, I really appreciate that. Trust me, I do. Uh, however, this is a decision for you and your family for. You know, potentially decades to come. So uh, I want to look out for your best interest. I am your advocate in the process, right? So uh, so then I get to, get to be that for them and let them off the hook, you know, say, hey, no, listen, uh, trust me, I, I get it. Uh, you know, this is how I would advise you. I'm going to shoot you straight and say, this is a better deal, go with it. I'm not going to, you know, try to make them feel bad and get, and get a buck out of them. So I wouldn't do that. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, what a testimony to you that your clients really feel loyalty to you sure, and want yeah. to stick with you, and yeah. then showing your integrity that you really want to show them what's the best yeah, option right. for them. That's great. But just getting a, a like a, a third opinion, a, a, an outsider in to look at the financial situation sure. with a builder and a buyer yeah. is just like me walking into a builder office with my client right you know a lot of right. people think oh well i don't need a realtor because i'm just going to go work with the builder right well they're not really you know the builder they're salespeople. they're working for the builder they're not working for you <laughs> That's right. so by having me go in it's an extra set of eyes extra set of ears to protect the client it's kind of like you coming yeah. in as well absolutely yes. yeah they and need to advocate on every side right they absolutely do That's yeah. it. okay so just kind of wrapping up is there anything um that these people who are watching today should know about you personally? Um, yeah, I, I would say that, uh, I, I guess I alluded to it a little bit earlier, but uh, but I, I take very seriously you know, what I do. And um, every single person I get to work with, it, it's always kind of like, oh man, this is, you know, it's like a, uh, every time I'm a little bit surprised by it, you know, that they would they would work with me. That's great, you know. So I, I really appreciate it. My family appreciates it. Uh, I take it very seriously, very professional with it and, and have dedicated to them to, uh, you will you will get my best um, out of it and I'll make sure, you know, to, to uh, shoot you straight and uh, to make the, the process as, as painless as possible and, and smooth. I like to do a lot of heavy lifting up front, so to speak, to, uh, to get all of the, um, all the T's crossed and I's dotted. Mm-hmm. I almost said that wrong. I was going to think about whenever I do that um, beforehand so that when we go in the process, it's, uh, it's smooth. And so uh, that's just personal conviction on how, um, it's it's not it shouldn't just be transactional, and I'm I'm very convicted of that and like to uh, again just uh, potentially seeing clients uh, you know walking down the street is is something I always ask myself could I do that honestly and, and not uh, or if I see the phone call am I gonna you know yeah uh-huh. you know, have a nervous sweat or something like so that good. no I want it to always end well I like to go to closings to and shake hands and stand by the work that I do and mm-hmm. uh, be held accountable um, in that so. I just I really take pleasure in that and getting to know people and getting to help them, getting to see them to the closing table and see the smiles on their faces and shake their hands and uh, and see the process done well um, because it can be you know and, and a lot of people see it very tra- transactionally and and we need to fight that you know in, in all these different uh, sorts of businesses that are you know sales minded um, and they should be client focused and, and geared towards that so I like to uh, to make that my main focus. Love it. Well, every client that I have sent you has always raved about you. I appreciate that. So I will continue to refer business to you, thank you. as well. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you for listening today. I hope that you found the information that Danny and I shared valuable for you. And if you're in the market to buy or sell a home, I would love to assist you. And if you need lending advice, Danny would be there as well to answer any questions that you might have.